Right, let's have a look at the functional skills AQA level two, paper two for January 2021. We have an hour and a half, you're allowed to use a calculator, so let's see how we do. First question is asking for the median. Now remember the median must be in order before you do anything, and it is in order, and then you're looking for the middle one. So let's cross off one on either side, two on either side, three on either side, and then we want to the middle. And the middle is, you can see it's going to be 8.5, but you can check by saying 8 plus 9 divided by 2. 8 plus 9 is 17 divided by 2. 17 divided by 2 is going to be 8.5. So the answer is 8.5, halfway between 8 and 9. For question number two, it says calculate. And here we have a mixed fractions, mixed, and we're subtracting them. So we're going to change them to uh, improper ones first. And to do that, we're going to say 3 lots of 10 is 30 plus 7 is 37. On the top, on the bottom 10, take away 1 lots of 4 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. And with fractions, if we're subtracting or adding, the denominators need to be the same. So I'm going to do, turn it into 40 by timing this one by 4. So we're going to get 40 on the bottom there. And then we hear 40. And so I times that one by 4, so I'm going to times that one by 4. So 37 times 4. Now remember, we are allowed a calculator. So we take a calculator out and we say uh, 37 times 40, which equals... Oops, sorry, I made a mistake, didn't I? times 4, which equals 148. Now, if you have a scientific calculator like mine, you don't actually need to do this step. You could go directly from there and get the answer. But I'm showing it in case you don't. And then we have 10 lots of 7 is 70. So we're going to have 148 take away 70. 148 take away 70, which gives us 78. And so the answer is 78 out of 40. Now, they've not asked to write it in any form, so you can leave it like that. If they've specified any things specifically, then obviously you have to do that. The other way you could have done it is to use the fraction buttons, and you could have done, done fraction buttons if you have one of those, or if you changed it into a um, top-heavy fraction, you could have done that. I had 37 over 10, take away 7 over 4 to get 39 over 20, which is basically this one simplified. If I halve 40, I get 20, and if I have so half 78, I'll get 39. Okay, so there's other things you could have written as possible answers, but this is correct, so I'll leave it like that. Question three is a calculation, and they're just checking that you know how to do it. It's a one mark question, so I'm just going to dive in and set it up 6,144, take away 4,800. Notice I have them in the numerator and then on the in the denominator, I will have 4,800. I press equal and it comes out as 7 25ths. But be careful, they're asking for a decimal. So the answer here was 7 25ths. But I'm going to change it to decimal by changing it here on my calculator. And it comes out to 0 0.28. So right on the bottom, I'm going to write 0 0.28. Very good. We're on to question 4. And question four has a pyramid with a formula. And they tell us that the base is B, S is a slant height. And down here, they tell us the base and the slant height. It says work out the surface area and that A is for the surface area. So we're just going to use that formula. So we have A is equal to B. So this is where we look for B and B is 14. And we're going to square it because it says square B 14, B squared. 14 squared plus 2 lots of 14 because b is 14 times s and s here it says 23. So let's work out 14 squared. 14 squared comes out to 196. So I'm going to add. We're going to do the multiplication. 2 times 14 times 23 comes out to 644. And then we're going to add them together. So we have 644 plus 196. And so the answer comes out to 840. Okay, I've written it there. But if you want to, you could write it there also. Two marks. What they're testing is that you know how to substitute the B and the S. 
and they're also checking that you know that you do powers first, then multiplication and find the addition. Question five presents us with four numbers and they say put them in order starting with the largest. So we're looking for the largest first. So we have 8307, 837, so that's looking bigger. 8307, that's looking bigger. 8307, so it's between these two being the biggest. So 8370, 8370, that's the same. So the next bit is 605, 065. So 605 is bigger than 065. So our biggest number is 8370605. The next biggest one is that one because we were trying to choose which of those. And that's going to be 065. And now you can clearly see that they were the same except for the end bit where 605 is bigger than 65. And now we're going to choose between these two. And we have again the same thing where 8307 is the same on both sides. Here we have 650 and this one's 605. So 650 is going to be bigger. 8307, 650. And the next one is going to be 8307, 6. And you can see that 650 is bigger than 605. Question 6. The table, it has fractions, decimals and percentages, and we need to work out the missing ones. I'm going to go right to the bottom, because this is nice and easy. If you're writing a fraction and you have 65%, you can just say 65 out of 100. They haven't asked us to simplify it, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. You can do it in the desk, you can use your calculator, but equally here, 32% is 32 out of 100, and if you divide by 100, you divide by 10, divide by 100, so it's going to give us 0 0.32. But of course, you can use your calculator for that. And when you're changing to a percentage, basically, if you're going in this direction, either of those, you just need to multiply by 100 to get into. So in this case, if I take this one and multiply it by 100, I'm going to end up with 42.5%. Okay, but we could have done it for the other one. 17 over 40. Multiply it by 100. We did that. Comes out to that. We pressed. You can see it's 42.5, just like we said. Question number seven. Question number seven is asking us to write that in digits. It says 4,930,612. So working backwards, 612 looks like this, 612. So I've done that bit. Then in front of that, we're going to have 930,000, 930,000. So we've done that bit. And the other bit is 4 million. You can leave it like that, or if you want to, you could put some comments in. 4,930,612. You come back to question number eight, and question number eight is asking us to draw a cuboid. Dimensions 2 centimetres, 3 centimetres, 4 centimetres. And they tell us that this isometric paper is already in centimetres. So basically we need to do a cube which is going to be 2 by 3. There's various ways of doing it, but I'm going to do 2 at the front. I'm just lining it up. Okay, 2 at the front. And 3 in the other direction. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. And again here, I'm going to go one, two, three. You could have done it the other way around, had three in one direction, two in the other direction. Okay, so that there is my two centimetres, that there is my three centimetres, and then in the other direction it's going to be four. So now we need to put four in. So when we do that, it's going to be four in that direction, four in that direction, And four in that direction, basically. So that's going to be my four centimeters. And now we just join up the dots. So this is the side of the cuboid, and that is finishing off the top of the cuboid. There you are. Quite a nice looking cuboid. So we're going to start section B. Question nine is to do with section B. You're baking, and they say that Selma is making some sponge cake. This is a recipe for sponge cake. It's enough to make uh, for 12 people. Selma wants to make a sponge cake to serve 30 people. So we're going to need more, because if this is enough for 12, we want to make enough for 30. So we want to 
want to make in less than 30 people. So we need to work out what do we do to 12 to make it 30. Well, clearly it's going to be a multiplication, but not knowing what it is, I'm going to go backwards. So 30 divided by 12 comes out with an answer. 30 divided by 12 comes out with an answer of 2.5. So it's going to be 2.5 times bigger. Let's continue reading before we go anywhere. Thelma wants to make a sponge cake for 30 people. Yes, we've, we've done that a little bit. She only has three quarters of a gram of a 500 gram bag of flour. How much more flour will she need? Give your answer in grams. One ounce is the same as 28. One ounce is the same as 28.4 grams. Okay, so in that case, we do not need to do the butter. We do not need to do the cast of the sugar and we don't need to do the eggs. All we need to do is work out the flour. So if we needed two and a half times the recipe for 30 people, we're going to need 10 times 2.5, which comes out to 25 ounces of flour. Okay. So let's see. That's how much she needs. How much more flour will she need? Let's find out how much she has. So here we have that she has three quarters of 500 grams. So she has three quarters of 500 grams, which comes out to 375. That is how much she has. The trouble is, that's in ounces and this one's in grams, so we can't see how much she needs because, it's, sorry, how much more she needs because we know what she needs, but we can't compare them. So I'm going to write down what they have here. Here it says one ounce is the same as two, 28, sorry, 28.4 grams. So if we have 24, 25 ounces, we can find out how many grams that is. So I kill it. Oh yes, that's in grams. That's good. So here, if you notice, what's happened is it's multiplied by 25. 1 times 25 is 25. So we shall do the same on this side, times it by 25. So we're going to take 28.4, sorry, 28.4, multiply it by 25, and we'll end up with 710. So that is how many grams, okay, she needs. So we took those 25 ounces and we changed it into grams. So that's how much she needs. She already has 375. So I'm going to take away what she has. So 710, take away 375, leaves us with 335. So it says, how much more flour will she need? She'll need another 335 grams. 335 grams. Now I don't need to write grams because I've already put grams on that bit there. Okay, that's quite good. And let's have a look at 9b. 9b says Selma wants to put a ribbon around three cakes she has made. The diameter of each cake is 23 centimetres. She has a roll of ribbon which is two metres long. Does she have enough ribbon for all three cakes? Notice it's in centimetres, that's in metres, so I'm going to change this one into centimetres by multiplying it by 100. So 2 times 100 becomes 200 centimetres. That's how much she has and now we're going to calculate how much she needs to see if she has enough. So if you have a circle and they tell us that they are round, okay, and they're mentioning diameter, that means we're going to go around the cake and to work out the distance around the cake we will use a formula which is going to be pi times diameter. And pi will use 3.14 multiplied by diameter and here they said the diameter is 23. So that's for one cake. 3.14 times 23 comes out to 72.22. 72.22 centimetres. But she has three cakes, so we need three of that. So we have three lots of our answer. So that's h times three. And so the answer comes out to 216.66. centimeters and that's what she needs. So if you compare what she needs to what she has, she doesn't have enough. No, she needs another 
16.66 centimeters because looking at this the difference is 16.66 okay so if someone buys a new cake mixer the cost includes the VAT Thelma can claim back this VAT work at the amount of VAT she can claim back so this is one of those reverse percentages so we know that this price the 352 pounds and 80 pence is the price that includes the VAT so that's 100% plus another 20% so it's 120% and we want to claim back the VAT and the VAT is worth 20% so in other words, we want to find out how much that is. Okay. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I will multiply those together and then divide by 120. Now, obviously, there's other ways of doing this question, but for speed, I'm going to do it that way. So 352.8 times 20 and then divide it by 120. I've done it all in one go. Press equals and it comes out to 58. Point eight. So the answer is going to be 58.8, so 58 pounds and 80 pence. That is how much the VAT is. Very good. So that means we're on to question number 10. Question number 10 is talking about an English school. Here we have a teacher, he's Jerry, and he teaches adult and junior classes. For each adult class, he is paid six pounds, so 80 plus a bonus. The bonus depends on the ratings he receives. In other words, if he gets good ratings, he'll get more bonus. The bonus he receives for each rating is shown in this table. So here's a bonus. And it also shows us the ratings he receives for the 16 adult classes. In other words, seven gave him five stars. One gave him between one and two stars. Last month, Jeremy also taught 43 junior classes. For each junior class, he has paid eight pounds. There is no bonus for teaching the junior classes. How much did Jerry earn last month? Okay, so we'll start with the junior because the junior is nice and easy. So the junior is basically eight pounds he's paid for every class and he taught 43 of them. So we have eight times 43 comes out to 344. So that's how much he's paid for the junior classes. Now we're going to have to look for the adult classes. Now for the adult classes, he is paid six pounds 80. Plus a bonus, but we'll do the bonus separately. And they tell us that he's done 16 classes. Okay. And it says here for each adult class, he's paid six pounds 80. So he's done 16 of them. And so six pounds 80 times 16 comes out to 100 pounds. 108 pounds and 80 pence. So now we're going to work out the bonus for these adult classes. And the bonus comes from having to work out 50%, 30% and 12.5% of that six pounds 80. So we need some space to do that. I am going to work out. Let me just highlight these because we're going to add that one to that one, but then we're going to have to work out these bonuses. So 50%. What is 50%? 50% is 50 out of 100 multiplied by the £6.80. So 50 out of 100 multiplied by £6.80 comes out to £3.40. So that's what he'll get for the bonus for the five star ratings. How many did he get? He had seven of those. So we're going to do seven lots of £3.40 and so £3.40 times 7 comes out to £23.80 now we'll work out the next one which is 30% so 30% out of 100 of £6.80 and see what that comes out to so we're going to say 30 out of 100 times six pounds 80 comes out to two pounds and four pence and he had five of those so we have five of those so times by five 
gives us 10 pounds 10 sorry 10 pounds 2 10 pounds and 20 pence so that's how much he gets for that one and the final one is this 12.5 percent so we're going to do 12.5 out of 100 times by six pounds 80 so 12.5 out of 100 times six pounds 80 gives us an answer of 85 pence How many of those do we have? Three. He has three of those. So th times three gives us an answer of two pounds fifty-five. So in total, they're asking us how much did Jen Jerry earn last month in total. So total means adding everything together. So we're going to add that one plus that one plus that one plus that one plus that one. Okay. So I'm going to add all those together. So we had 344 plus 108.80 plus 23.80 plus 10.20 plus £2.55. I them all together and it comes out to £489 with 35 pence. Brilliant. Okay. Try to show as much of your workings as you can because there are six marks available. Right, let's look at question number 10b. And 10b has a table and they tell us these are the online school asks 80 teachers what type of class do they prefer to teach and what time of day do they prefer. So we have the time of day and we have the type of class. And you can see there's eight, 80 teachers in total as they set up there. And you can see if you add these you get 80. But there's some gaps missing and it says one of the teachers is chosen at random is the probability that the teacher prefers daytime junior classes more than a quarter? So we're going to have to fill in the table first before we can do this. So there's various ways of doing this. We can find that one by saying 80 take away 18. I'm going to do it for this one. 80 take away 18. 80 take away 18. You might not need all of these, but I'm just thought, well, I might as well fill it in. We'll give us 62 here. Okay. And then to work out this one here, I say 18 take away 15 is 3. But you can also see that 15 plus 3 is 18. And for this one, we can do 62 take away 46. So let's do that. 62 take away 46 leaves us 16. Okay. So, but what was the question? The question is, let's find the probability of daytime junior classes. So here we have daytime and junior classes. So that's the one we need. 16. So the probability is 16 out of 80. Before comparing, let's change it to a fraction, from a fraction to a decimal, sorry. 16 divided by 80 gives us 0 0.2. And they said, is the probability that the teacher prefers daytime junior classes more than a quarter? So let's see what a quarter is. And a quarter in your calculator will come out to 0 0.25. For comparative purposes, I'll add zero there. And they're saying, is this more than that one? And we can say that no, 0 0.20 is actually less. So the answer is no, 0 0.20 is less than 0 0.25. Notice it's easier to use fractions when comparing numbers. OK, that was 10b. We're on to question 11a. Okay, 11a is a cycle shop. He sells bicycles and equipment. He organises a sale with 12% off all the bicycles. He changed his price of one bicycle from 278 to 254.64. Has Harry changed the price correctly? Show you workings now. This is one of those questions that has various ways of doing it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the more obvious one. If the price has gone down, I'm going to calculate what it should have been. So if it's gone down 12%, 12% of the initial price, 278, comes out to 12 over 100, multiplied by 278, 33 pounds and 36 pence. So the price should be 278 take away 33 pounds and 36 pence. So 278 take away 33 pounds and 36 pence 
And so the price should be 244.64. He changed it to 254.64, which is not the same as this. So has he changed the price correctly? The answer is no, because they didn't come out the same. That's a nice three mark question. We're now to 11B and it says he orders new bicycles to sell in the shop. He orders 45 bicycles for children, bicycles for children and bicycles for adults are in the ratio of 5 to 6. The bicycles for adults are in the ratio mounted to road 7 to 11. How many road bicycles for adults does he order? OK, so we're going to start with the ratio of adults to children. So sorry, children to adults, children to adults. And that was in the ratio of five to six. And they tell us that there were 45 children ones. Which means we'll need to find how many adult ones there were. So if we did that. We're looking to see what's happened on this side. And clearly it's got bigger, so it's times. Five times something is 45. If you know the times tables, you know that's five times nine is 45. But if you don't know that, working backwards, you say 45 divided by five, and the answer comes out to nine. Okay which means this is what we're going to do on this side, times by 9. And 6 times 9 is 54. 6 times 9 is 54. There you are, see? So the answer here is 54. So there are 54 adult bikes. But the question isn't how many, uh, ro uh, how many bicycles for adults, it says how many road bicycles. So we're going to have to now find out how many of those bicycles, how many of those 54 road. So let's look at the second ratio, and it says for the adults, the ratio between mountain and road are in the ratio of 7 to 11. And we know that all together we had 54 bikes, so we're going to have to split that 54 into this ratio. So we're going to have to find how many parts we have. So 11 plus 7 is 18 parts. We're then going to say how many do we have, so 54 divided by 18. 54 divided by 18 tells us that we have 3. So each part is worth 3. So when we come to do this, this side will be times 3 and that side will be times 3. But the one we're interested in road, this is the one we want to find out. So 11 times 3 would be 33. They didn't ask about mountains, so I'm not going to bother wasting any time on that. So how many road bicycles does he need to order? 33 is the answer. That was 11B. Let's have a look at the 11C. And 11C says Harry wants to paint the shop floor. The diagram below shows the plan of the floor. That means what it looks like if you look down on it. The floor is made up of a rectangle joined with a semicircle. And indeed, you can see that because if you do this, you can see that below is a rectangle and above is a semicircle. That's half a circle. He needs to buy tins of paint for the whole floor. Each tin costs £26.88 cover and one tin covers 18 metres squared. Work out the total cost. Now, that, before we can work out the total cost, we're going to have to find the area. And so if we find the area of the rectangle, that's going to be 14 times 6 for the area of the rectangle. So 14 times 6 comes out to a nice straightforward 80. OK, so that's the area for that one. But we're going to have to work out the area of the semicircle. Now, the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. But this is half a circle, so at the end we're going to divide by 2. Pi is 3.14 times the radius. Now they haven't given us the radius, so we're going to have to work it out. How are we going to do that? Well, we know the full distance from there to there is 14. So 14 take away 2 would be 12. 12 take away 2 would be 10, which tells me that that full distance there is 10. Because 10 plus 2 plus 2 is 14. But that means the diameter is equal to 10. And we don't want the diameter, we want the radius. And the radius is half that. So the radius would be 5 centimetres. You'll get a mark for no calculating the radius. So the radius is 5 centimetres, so 5 squared. And then all of that divided by 2. So we now have 3.14 times 5 squared. Gives an answer of that. And let's divide by 2 which gives an answer of 39.25, 39.25 metres squared. So that's how much 
the size of the floor is. So we need to find out how many of those fit into it. So we're going to say 39.25 divided by 18. Divide by 18. Oh, now I made a mistake, haven't I? This is easy to do. We've worked out that this area here is 39.25, but we need a full area. So let's correct that. We need a full area. How do we work out the full area? Well, by adding them together, the area of the rectangle and the area of the semicircle. So before we do anything, let's do that bit. So the area of the rectangle was 84. The area of the semicircle was 39.25. So the total area is going to be 84 plus 39.25, which comes out to 123.25. That's how much the size of the floor is. But we want to find how many tins we need to do. So we're going to take that number, which was 123.25, and divide by 18 to find out how many tins we need. So answer divided by 18 comes out to 6.84, etc. 6.84, da 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 da. Which means that six tins wouldn't be enough. We'll have to buy seven tins. So since we have to buy seven tins, let me just make these points a bit more obvious. Seven tins, each tin cost £26.88. They're going to say seven times 26.88 gives us an answer of £188.16. So the answer is £188 with 16 pence. Okay, nice. See how you have to keep checking to make sure that you haven't missed any steps out, especially considering it is six marks. And you do need to know what the radius is or calculate it. Right, we're now on to question 12 and it says Lynn is going to a hotel for the weekend. She leaves work at 5.15pm. It takes her 15 minutes to get home. She spends 35 minutes at home and then she drives to the hotel. The distance from Lynn's home to the hotel is 77 miles. She drives at an average speed of 44 miles per hour. Does she arrive at the hotel before 8 p.m.? You must show your workings. Four marks. Now, when you do this type of question, you probably have to think of it in several ways because there are several ways of doing it. What I probably do is use this bit first, which is finding out how long she has for that journey. So it says she leaves work at 5.15 p.m. She then takes her another 15 minutes to get home. So if we have 15 plus 15, that means it will be 5.30 by the time she gets home. That's p.m., sorry. And then it takes her another 35 minutes to kind of get ready. Yeah, before she drives to the hotel. So 30 plus 30 is another hour, so that's going to be 6. So she's going to basically 6.05 before she starts driving. Now the thing is, this is when she starts driving and this is when she wants to arrive. So the time she has for the journey is going to be another 55 minutes here. That will get us to 7 and then 8. So she basically has 1 hour and 55 minutes for the journey. Because if you think about it, 6, 5 plus 55 will be an hour. So that's 7. 7 plus 1 is 8 p.m. Okay, so that's how long she has for the journey. So now the question is, we're going to use this information to find how long she, the journey would take her and see if this is enough time. Okay, so what we have here is the distance and the speed. And if you have one of those triangles, we have speed equals distance over time. And we, in this question here, we have the distance and we have the speed. So let us find the time. So time is calculated by distance over speed. And the distance she's travelling is 77 miles. Divided by speed. And the speed is 44 miles per hour. Okay. So luckily we have a calculator for that one. So 77 divided by 44 comes out to 7, fourth, 7 over 4 or 1.75. So 1.75 
of an hour. Okay. But we want to change this into something we can compare there. So that is the same as one hour. And to change the 75, because the one bit is fine, so I'm going to do 0 0.75 times by 60 to change into minutes. 0 0.75 times 60 to change into minutes comes out to 45. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So 1.75 hours is the same as 1 hour and 45 minutes. This is how long it would take her. This is how long she has. And will she get there in time? And the answer is yes. Because basically she'll get there 10 minutes earlier than planned. Brilliant. So we're on to 12b. And 12b is one of these questions that runs over two pages. It's a scatter plot. And we have Lynn plans to visit a beach. She wants to know how busy it will be on the day. And here we have number of visitors and down here the temperature. And that's what it tells us here. Table shows some extra data for three more days. And then on part B, sorry, on the second page, I mean, it says temperature is forecast to be 18 degrees Celsius on the day, that, on the day she wants to go to the beach. Use the scatter diagram with the extra data. That means we're going to have to plot the extra bit and then find and answer the question to estimate the number of visitors she expects to see on that day. So first things first is to plot. So the first one is here we have down there. Let's bring it up so you can see. We have 17. So we're looking for 17, which is there, and 80. So it will cross here. OK. Next one is 17 and a half, which is here. And it goes up to 95. Now, between 90 and 100, 95 is in the middle. So as we go up, it will be exactly in the middle there. OK. The next one is 18 and a half, which is here. And it goes up to 110. Good. So we've plotted those extra data, which is what they wanted. Then after that, you're going to get a ruler. And you're going to try and get a line going through as many of the crosses as possible. OK, so I'm probably going to do something a bit like that ish. OK. Now, this is a case where everybody will have slightly different lines, but approximately it should look something like that. Yours might be a little bit more this way or a little bit more that way, but, you know, roughly something like that. And then we look what the question was. The question was asking us on 18 degrees Celsius, how many visitors? So let's look for 18 degrees Celsius on this graph. And 18 is here. So I go up, 18 goes there, touches my line. When it touches my line, we're then going to go across. There we are. So in this case, it's going to be 102. Each box is worth two. So 102. So I'm going to come right here. 102 visitors. Now, obviously, your answer might be slightly different because your line might be slightly different. Then we're on to question 12C, which is the last one. It says here, end of questions. So 12C says she has a budget of £175 for her weekend away. Fuel for her car will cost 12.5p for every mile. She drives 77 miles each way to and from the hotel. The total cost of the hotel room is £94.50. After paying for the fuel and the room, what percentage of her budget does she have left? So we're going to have to work out how far she's travelling, how much she spends on that. Total it all together and then see. So we know that she's travelling both ways. It says she drives 77 miles each way. So basically we're going to have two lots of 77. OK. 2 times 77 gives us 154. So that's how far she's travelling. And that's in miles. Yes, miles. And they tell us it costs a 12.5 pence for each one. So now we can say 12.5 times 154. So 154 times 12.5. The answer comes down to 1,925. Now it looks like a lot of money, but remember we were in pence. So the answer comes out in pence. So if you want to change it to pounds, you divide by 100. So you'll end up with 19.25 for pounds, which makes a bit more sense. I'm not going to pay that for if it were pounds. Okay, so that's how much the fuel costs. 
and the hotel costs 94 so what she basically pays or spends is going to be 19 pounds and 25 pence plus 94 pounds and 50 pence so 19 pounds 19 pounds 25 plus 94.50 comes out to 133.75 13, sorry, 113.75. It says here, the total cost of the hotel is that. After paying for the fuel and room, what percentage of her budget does she have left? Okay, so we need to find out what's left over. So 175 was her budget. Take away 113.75. Take away 113.75 leaves us with or leaves her with 61 pounds and 25 pence with 61 pounds and 25 pence okay but he said not what does she have left he says what percentage so now we're going to have to write it down 61 25 as a fraction of all the money that she initially had and then multiply it by 100 to turn it into percentage so we're going to have 61 25 over 175 times by 100 and it comes out to 35. So the amount for this answer is going to be 35%. Well done. That's the end of that. So hope that was useful. See you next time. Bye.